to take BlizzCon. Their rotations were really on point, but Fnatic has just adopted that and even so, like, pushed that to the forefront, really, of this map. As we now get into the draft for game number two, let's get it going. Currently, Fnatic leads 1-0 in this best of five against Team Liquid. So yesterday, uh, I guess... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, makes right. no sense <laughs> right away. I mean, yeah. makes perfect sense. Just Wubby is a beast on that hero. Sorry, Grummy, you were uh, saying? Yesterday against Red Cannons, Fnatic uh, played... They skipped the first two objectives, yeah. kind of, and they just uh, applied gray main pressure on opposite forts. Uh, as you said, they are willing to give up that objective. And uh, Team Liquid actually picked that gray main up right away. This draft like is going that. by fast, yeah. I'd like to say. Fnatic identifying the strengths of Team Liquid. Not necessarily saying we're scared of Vikings as much, but the Abther Ben, I'd say, is very telling. Greymane is very strong and one of Quacknick's signature and best heroes, I'd say. So it makes a lot of sense for them to pick that up early in prioritization. I wonder, do you think any priority will be placed on Stukov? From my perspective, I feel like this is his best map. And Fnatic did use Stukov yesterday, uh, Glaurung, on this map. I think they're thinking about him, but probably it'll be like second rotation of picks, right? Yeah. yeah. I have a question. Is that now that the hacker is gone, do you think a higher prioritization for a Fnatic than normal would be on a, a false stat to have some global and also have a little bit of power behind that? Uh, in my brain, I'm thinking Illidan okay. personally for that pseudo global. Right. But you never really know. Yesterday they did use the Zul in the position of that pseudo global where he's able to rotate and just kind of clean up the map. Like yeah. Wubby, he's just oh. a phenomenal janitor when it comes <laughs> up down to cleaning up the map. I was going to say, I mean, he can flex into so many different heroes that actually specifically for this map will do a lot of work. We talk about Malfield, we talk about Sonya. Those just spring to mind immediately as big, big power picks. I mean, let's talk about something that is quite uncommon here. How high that Lunara is on that side. That's not the most common of pickups here. I think with Oriole being up, Fnatic said, I mean, Schwimpy's just the best Genji in the world. They want to get that for Schwimpy, but they also don't want to let Team Liquid get their signature Lunara Oriole into double support team composition. And what this allows Fnatic to do is play that hyper sustained team composition themselves mm. if they decide to. I think it was a really smart draft maneuver. Great hero for Quacknix. Yep. I think it'll be interesting to see how Genji performs against Greymane. We have not seen it that much at a LAN environment yet. Uh, now that Genji has been nerfed, where his level 7 dodge talent only absorbs one auto attack, Greymane and even Vala can deal with Genji much more effectively. There will not be Uther available as well for Fnatic, as Fnatic would rather deny Uther Ariel combination to Team Liquid than to even pick it up themselves. Uther, he is great with Genji, but he lacks sway on the objective. So this is definitely a nod towards the map. Had it been Battlefield of Eternity, maybe Uther Genji would have been a thing for Fnatic. I feel like the Uther ban is very telling. I, I, I just feel like Fnatic wants Stukov here. Stukov, yeah, mm -hmm. it must be. It's like against Oriole, Lunar has a good matchup because she has a lot of poke. Stukov has a lot of sustain as well, and if you're able to approach team fights in that way, Oriole starts to struggle. And we definitely saw this yesterday from the North American teams. They played into the Oriole compositions exactly how the European teams wanted them to, and they got insane am amounts of value out of the Oriole. The Vala or the Lunara in those cases were able to constantly battle, generate hope. Yeah. But in this game, with Fnatic's draft, they're able to deal damage without taking damage, and I feel like that's a really good way to shut down the Oriole. I mean, sure, yeah. Team Liquid have taken a bit of time here to decide what this fifth and, or say, sorry, second uh, ban is, they decide to actually go for the route of banning out a tank. I thought they're going to go more so towards the Smexy route, or even just Wubby. Yeah, I, I'm really curious to see what hero Wubby ends up on. It could be anything from the Zul stukov synergy. I don't know if we've talked about it too much, but the route that Zul has in this association with the Lurking Arm is a yeah. very strong combination. And uh, they showed it against Red Canids, you got to take that with a bit of a grain of salt. They might have been hiding strats later for the tournament, just sort of testing things because Fnatic is so good, they can test things on stage if they want. <laughs> right, right. Uh, but I, mean, I can see that. I, I, I kind of agree with you. I actually thought that the Zul with the Stukov was something that could be a powerful duo throughout this tournament if Fnatic wanted it to be. But as you say, they've got plenty of tools at their disposal. I think it's a good thing to remember. Anytime you t uh, go up against Ariel, you need uh, silences or displacement, like Stitch's hook, yeah. uh, lurking arm from Stukov, because you don't just want to have a normal fight against them over and over. It is actually going to be Leoric for Wubi on the offlane, potential Royal Focus level 4 talent pick for the double soak. 
And then it's going to be Rhaegar, more for the Shrine Control with the damage Lightning Shield rather than uh, Stukov uh, at this moment. Ancestral is very good with Genji as well. Perhaps they feel like they yeah. value that a little bit higher. Fnatic's draft here, to me, is a bit more reminiscent of what they were playing at the mid-season brawl. Yep. So, like, on the desk, we anticipated a bit of innovation, but at the same time, they had so much success with this style of composition. Why change it? Yeah. I don't see a way to isolate against Ariel yet. Uh, the Ariel Vala composition, the presumable Tassadar that's going to be coming out now from Team Liquid, I would imagine. Stitches Tassadar maybe being the most apparent choices here. But I don't see any way to deal with Ariel yet. So that fifth pick for Fnatic really intrigues me. Do you not think there could be power behind Entomb to kind of have a little bit of isolation there? Yeah, I guess Entomb and maybe Diablo's Apocalypse. Mm. Uh, That's what I'm waiting for. I'm just looking at these last two picks and thinking, surely it has to be. This is the map for it, if it ever was going to come out. Oh, -ho! wow. Okay, so not the Tassar, not the double support. Instead, they're all tricks. Lost Vikings coming out. We knew this going into the series that the Ebifer and TLV would have a lot of impact and there would be a big focus for them and with the Ebifer taken away, I mean, that threw me off guard personally. I didn't think TLV would be the choice here to, to yeah. deal with what Fnatic have right now. On a different side note, Breeze has yet to select a hero, and if he did opt in for the Diablo, there we go. Devil's Do on this map yeah. gets just an absurd amount of value, and at the same time, once we're level 10, a team with such crisp, clean execution, I anticipate we see this at least once this game, where Wubby, the instant he's throwing out the Entomb, before it even shows up animation-wise, Breeze will be starting his charge and just completely crush someone into the Entomb. Because Intomb functions as any other part of terrain. It synergizes yeah, yeah. very well with Diablo's charge. Yeah, and just to uh, further sing praise for Diablo, uh, Apocalypse can follow on Crystal Aegis if you force it out for yep. a guaranteed hit. Yep. Uh, Diablo gets 10 souls per Viking kill. Uh, Apocalypse can counter Moshpit from ETC if Diablo is not caught inside it. There's so many good things for Diablo here. So there's a big problem here for Team Liquid, which is they can't fight. <laughs> going up against that, it feels almost impossible for them to ever fight. I mean, once again, it's a case of sort of macro. I mean, this is the most played map for both of these teams, so they're yeah. quite familiar when it comes to that sort of territory. But I'm just looking at the Genshin and thinking the Swift Strike build that has come to fruition as the main build, especially against TLV, is just going to run rampant. I feel like Wubby on Leoric this game is just going to have a heyday. The way he mm. plays that hero, the way he's innovated Leoric worldwide with his royal focus right. sort of pressure the map build will enable Fnatic, I think, to be a little bit more free with what they do on the other side of the map. Do you think then, that with the Leoric being picked up and then realizing what they can do, they felt that they needed to pick TLV to try and match it or mirror it in some capacity? Mm, I don't know if the Lost Vikings was as much a response to the Leoric as much as it's saying Fnatic's like, Pretty or bad. Liquid saying, this is what we're most comfortable with. Right. Let's just see if Fnatic can deal with how strong right. we are as a team with Vikings. Okay, well, thank you very much, gents, as we are now ready for game number two. Let's head over to the commentary team as will Diablo and Leoric be able to push the team of Fnatic into a 2 0 lead? Team Liquid, after losing game number one, brings back the old Team Liquid standard of the Lost Vikings, even on Infernal Shrines, where we don't normally see the Vikings. Yeah, both of these teams bringing out heroes that they love to put on full display. Vikings oh, yeah. here for Team Liquid. They're going to be moving forward and getting aggressive. Vala here for Nurok is going to be such a treat to watch. He put a lot of work into getting good at that hero. And of course, Diablo for Breeze, who I would argue in Phase 2 has become his new ETC. It's become almost a character for Breeze to play at all times. Diablo is so fun to play on Infernal Shrines because because there are so many walls around That's those right. shrines to shrub people into. And once you get devastating charge and start stacking those up to do a ton of max health to people, it gets pretty darn fun. But here they are in the blue, up 1-0 in this best of five series. Fnatic with Smexy playing Rhaegar Schwimpy again on Genji. Wubby we'll playing Leoric, Breeze playing Diablo, and Quacknix playing Lunara. On the right side in the red, Blumby will be on ETC, Dark Moth on Fala, Splinter playing Aryo, Hasuab on the Vikings, and of course, last but not least, Nurok will actually be on Greymane. So they swapped it up here. They put Dark Moth here back on the Bala, and Nurok will be on the Greymane. It does seem to be more and more switching over Dark Moth mm -hmm. to those range carry heroes playing Bala. His Lunara was particularly good yesterday, too. And speaking of Lunara, Lunara. You know, we talk a lot about Schwimpy's Genji, but I want to highlight Quacknix's Lunara here. He averages 4.3 kills per game with her. He's only played her three times in Phase 2, but has a 17.5 KDA with her. He is such a strong Lunara, knows when to go in, how he can put the damage in, and he will make things difficult 
for Splendor trying to keep everyone healed up. And speaking about being difficult here, Eric will be picked up there as Diablo goes in for the engage, grabbing some souls here, which is going to start to synergize with that trait. And remember, if you are a Diablo player and you're playing on this battleground, this level one talent, Devil's Dew, is very important to grab. Being able to grab those region gloves, get the regeneration moving forward, based on the amount of souls you have, will always be wonderful here. So make sure to grab that level one there as Breeze will be using it as much as he can as the rotations begin. And the Vikings will have to be careful. Typically, when you have the Vikings, you're going to get that four-man rotation, right, to push in waves. But with Diablo lurking around, he is the premier gank warrior. He will come in and force you to be much more careful. Yeah, and there are already uh, a four-man rotation happening for Fnatic that makes it a little bit different for Vikings to play against. So I'm interested to see how Team Liquid wants to approach playing Vikings on this battleground. Well, look how they're adapting, too. Team Liquid is putting themselves in a spot where they can gank Fnatic in this middle rotation area. They actually don't want to be pushing waves right now until the Shrine's Spawn. They're letting the Vikings just soak their ways for them, and they're in a spot where if Fnatic tries to overstep and rotate between middle and bottom, they can get a kill. Fnatic, realizing this, isn't really doing too much. They went ahead and put Leoric in the top, as well as another member, just to push in those Vikings. So Schwimpy is here, and if he jumps over a wall, comes in for an aggressive play, he can take out a Viking quickly. Yeah, I feel like having a Viking in each lane sort of advertised that they were wanting to do that, just yep. try to get ganks on the four, traditional four-man, and Fnatic responded perfectly, just staying safe in lane. Now we have a Shrine phase starting. This is Nice for Team wow. Liquid. They blow up Genji, taking out Schwimpy at the start of the Shrine phase. Love to see it here. A little bit more heat from Team Liquid. A little bit more decisive coordination. Come in and get a pick on Schwimpy. Great power slide there from Blumby. And this one was kind of wondering, how was Fnatic going to handle the early phase where Team Liquid will obviously have the Vikings in different lanes to soak? And they've decided to go ahead and give up the Shrine and push in the opposite lane to work on turrets. Will be in trouble, though, in the top left. It looks like he may get picked off as Nurok goes in for the final swipe. Yeah, but he was trying to delay for a long time, allowing something to be taken during that time from Fnatic. They got a Mercenary camp in the bottom lane and have Quacknix pushing along with that. But Team Liquid does get the Punisher. It's an Arcane Punisher at that, but the first one of the game. So it's not going to be exceptionally strong. Instead, Team Liquid just hoping that they can get some sort of a, an additional lead, take out some towers, open things up for future pushes. Yeah, it's kind of uh, interesting how in Europe the evolution of handling that first Punisher has really moved forward. A lot of teams will just go ahead and give it up, soak out sure. the lands, work on turrets here, and Fnatic's put that on full display as they push in the bottom there with that Lenara bringing the pressure on their opponents and trying to break them in. They were able to get a decent amount of experience. In fact, they're a little bit ahead here of their opponents. Trickster, Quacknix got so much done in the bottom lane. The fort is already fairly low in health, about halfway down. That was really well done by Fnatic, considering the fact that they were making the best of a bad situation. Guess who they catch? And look at this. Wubby showing why when he is partnered with his buddy Genji, they can get kills quickly on those Vikings. Moving straight in, bringing in the big swing. Genji jumping in with a Swiss strike, and of course, they give the final blow. And this will force Baylog to come all the way to top lane just to deal with that experience, which means suddenly this four-man from Team Liquid may have to rotate to the bottom to grab that experience. And Team Liquid stole a camp away, at least. They're hoping to slow down Fnatic, who are already starting to push in toward their structures once again. They don't want to allow them to be able to get that kind of pressure like they got in the last game, too. And plus, it also gives them a great amount of siege here in the mid lane. So that's where they're going to really start to put the siege in taking advantage of the fact that they had the first Punisher as well. They had the towers low. Now they're trying to take down the first fort of the game and make sure that they're keeping up with damage that Fnatic put on. And look at this throwback to the MSB for the build for Lee Work. Royal Focus build coming online here. Lingering well. Apparition. Exactly. Being able to soak two lanes at once, which will be very important. One, the Vikings are already playing very defensive because Diablo is on the field, which means Lee Work will be able to push in a lane in the top, rotate in the middle before any of the Vikings can push forward. Even Balog, because Team Liquid is playing so scared with those Vikings. So now he'll be able to push two lanes, which allows for his team to move in and actually fight slash contest for these shrines. And I believe that you guys in Europe traditionally see Burning Rage paired along with those two at 13, correct? Yeah, if you need an extra wave clear, you go for that Burning Rage. You've seen some other options picked up at 13, but typically, yeah, you move into that route if you just want to make sure you clear the waves. They do have a lot of wave clear. The Team Liquid are hoping to use their Shrine clear yet again up in the top lane this time. Again, though, Fnatic just seem disinterested in these earlier Punishers. They know that it's going to take some time to be up there in the top. Wubby spots it out, in fact, gets punished for that, along with the Bruisers there. But all this time, 
Fnatic have their eyes set in the mid and the bot. Yeah, I was expecting Fnatic to go ahead and adapt here and go ahead and move into that shrine, but they've decided to go ahead and wait till level 10 where they have that spike coming online that was mentioned by the analyst earlier. So they're gonna go ahead and keep on soaking up. They're almost at that 10 right now, in fact. They're about to get it as they cleared out that middle lane. They got the expanse there as well. Have, of course, Wubby sitting around this top lane getting the expanse at the same time. Now, can Team Liquid do anything with this push? Can they break down the fort? They have Blumby aggressively pushing forward, and it looks like it because Fnatic decides to take the fort in the middle. Yeah, it may have just been a product of where Fnatic already was and where the Shrine spawned, where they decided just to keep Lunar on the bottom, already get that for it, and then do a lot of damage to mid two before backing off. But they don't want to start losing out on the keep structures. That's where the buck stops. So they're starting to rotate back around. They still got Genji hanging out in mid, making sure to keep the soak up against the Vikings. Breeze, considering heroic, he does end up getting Apocalypse. There was a lot of synergy talked about what that can do uh, at the Analyst desk, especially versus Crystal Aegis. Wubby coming in here, using that Lingering Apparition to move in quickly, go in and they get a kill on Baylog. He will be picked off and the Punisher is going to be defended. Crowd cheering hard for the EU versus EU match taking place right now. Don't forget, you guys can support your favorite teams even at home watching by cheering in the Twitch chat the teams, but we have a very close game on our hands between Team Liquid and Fnatic. Team Liquid showing that they still have the mental stamina, even when losing versus Fnatic in that game number one, to bring the fight to them once again in game two. I mean, they have also ups on Vikings. That's always a uh, morale boost when you're that playing Team Liquid true. here. Especially look at the level 10 here. We have the Vikings boat being picked up, not play again for Team Liquid. So these are team or Vikings that are intending to fight. Already the Vikings should be strong in a team fight, especially with that level 16 when it gets that stun on Olaf, can move in for the aggressive play, but now you have decent control of the Shrines. You can pop a Viking boat, help siege away upon them, and at level 20, move in for Ragnarok and roll, and you get double the DPS. Here's my concern for that. I love that they have the boat, because that is going to be necessary to try to keep them alive so that Fnatic doesn't spiral out of control with mm -hmm. Thornwood Vine dotting everybody up with the poisons along with Splintered Spear and then Dragon Blade and the Swift Strike build to cut people down. If they start to get Team Liquid low enough where Ariel cannot keep up with the heals, that boat's going to be necessary to try to make sure that the Vikings aren't the first ones that end up giving those resets to Schwimpy. That's a good point. Also on the other side too, there is always a possibility of Apoc getting a little bit more value with three bodies being near a fight, so you want to make sure you get so that true. long boat in there. Or at least have your Vikings spread out to where it doesn't affect your other teammates. But it is possible it's on the Vikings, so We'll see how he handles that situation. Fnatic for the moment moving towards level 13, keeping up with the wave clear, and they're doing a great job against the Vikings. Next Shrine has now activated to the very far south for both of our teams. What does Fnatic do? We're getting later and later into the Shrines, but they may want to start not just giving these up for free. They already have a great setup in the bottom lane, specifically because they did take down that fort earlier on. They're going to hang around here. Team Liquid with the Vikings and the constant soaking is slightly closer to 13. Fnatic definitely wants the 13 of their own, especially for that devastating charge around the Shrine. Fnatic contending here on the bottom, working on that 13, getting the region glow for Breeze too if he wants to go in for the fight. He'll want to slam somebody against the wall. Bala in particular is his main target. A Dark Mock positioned well. Splinter there for the ages at any, any point. Now Wubby continues to soak the top in the middle lane, pushing them in. Will he come in for an aggressive play to set up his team? He's starting to move in. There goes Schwimpy and Breeze as well. Crystal Aegis has been popped. Breeze was stunned though, and the Longboat Raid is putting out a lot hey, of damage. Pop. Apocalypse drops down, and look at Schwimpy rip through Team Liquid. And he's going to keep going here, swiping left, swiping right here. He's on tender. Neuros getting taken out. Multiple members as well. That's going to be multiple members down for Team Liquid. That's the combo of Genji and Lunara. A team wipe against Team Liquid. Fnatic will take the Shrine. And just in the nick of time, Team Liquid were sitting at 36 skeletal defenders by the end of that fight. Fnatic was so patient, waiting for 13, waiting for Wubby, and then they struck. Fantastic play there by Wubby in particular. He came in for the rotation to go to the bottom right, put immediate pressure on that Bala, which forced everyone from Team Liquid to seep up to the top, which allowed for Apocalypse to hit multiple members because they went through a small choke, small corridor, and then of course Genji came in there, cleaned it all up. So now it's all about the push here for Fnatic as they have a Shrine already finished up and a Punisher. They're moving straight to keep walls. And they have a Mercenary Camp still hanging out in the mid. Wubby checking out to see if anyone's going to defend that too. And again, where this game was originally close, Fnatic has opened it up in a big way. So close to getting 16 to the 13 of Team Liquid just off of that decisive, perfect fight. 
16 close here. They'll be able to grab it pretty well here. Clearing out the middle. They've even brought in multiple members. Wubby's even here on the side. Typically that Royal Focus, you see him on the side pushing in. Much getting experience. A big Moss Pit going up from Blumby. They're going to eliminate Lenora. And the Strafe is taking down Smexy and how as well. Smexy goes down. A Swift Strike will save the life of Schwimpy, but Liquid finds an opening just before Fnatic gets 16. And that couldn't have come at a better time. They needed that, and Team Liquid will take the opportunity to open up the map, but also get valuable experience. They need to get 16 themselves and make sure they're in a spot where they've opened up the map too, so the Vikings can run rampant. So far, they've been so defensive the entire time here. And remember, that 16, we talked about it. Olaf getting that large and in charge, very important for team fights. Just about the one place you can try to get Fnatic is right around that point. If you can catch them out Breeze. being aggressive, they're going after Breeze as well. He's got a huge heal on him, but he's still staying alive somehow with all of those souls while Schwimpy decimates every other member of Team Liquid here. Devils do absolutely destroying that fight, but Swimpy going even further in there, getting multiple members killed off there. I can't believe the engage actually working out for Fnatic, but that 16 to 15, the forced fight, the apocalypse coming off there, just enough for Fnatic, and somehow, some way, even though we just saw them lose a major team fight, they bounce back instantly. Man, I'm so glad that the analyst has talked about Devils Do there, because yeah. and we got to see it in action, because goodness, just ridiculous. Diablo is such a powerhouse on Infernal Shrines. And just like that, Fnatic turned the game right back around. Opening up the mid, taking out the uh, towers as well as the gate. Team Liquid Wolves respawn, but this sets up Fnatic to have a better positioning and rotation initially to the Shrine. Well, we've had a ping pong match so far. We had Blumby come in, force a fight, and then of course Breeze came back, and Blumby was looking for another engage. He was sharking around the top left, but Fnatic realizing, okay, they do have the possibility to come in from an ETC, get the engage they want, and they do have 16, and they wisely back on up. And now they're controlling the fog of war, sitting on the bushes on the side here, Breeze threatening a push, and Blumby comes in for a power slide. He will find Schwimpy, but Schwimpy narrowly escapes. It was a good catch, but man, getting is such a slippery target to try to take down Thornwood Vines. Finding a lot of targets from Team Liquid trying to move in. Dark Monk gets caught. There Breeze. is a charge on top of the Entomb. Oh my, Breeze getting the kill there as well. Hostel have to pop the Vikings boat to try and get away, but he's getting focused down. He'll be stunned right away, and we're going to have constant swipes coming in here. Swimpy getting the damage in as well. Hostel finally getting picked off as well as Olaf. On the side, though, Blumby will power slide away. Man, Fnatic uses choke points so well with their composition. Fnatic, Quacknick's constantly keeping an eye on everybody with the poison and natural perspective. And once Wubby Good found point. his mark with Entomb Breeze, of course, is going to follow up. They take down a keep. And once again, we see Fnatic bringing down the core of Team Liquid. It's a Quacknick shot call here. He decides to go straight for the core. Mosh Pit is up and available. So Fnatic will have to spread out. Swimby's on the back right. Lenar's on the left side. Great spreading out by both of them. Mexi trying to throw down the totem pole to slow down Blumby as much as possible. An Ancestor will be used, but here is a Moss Pit. Apoch being used to disrupt it, and that's going to be core here as it continues to fall, and Fnatic gets the 2-0 victory. Fnatic knew they still had Apocalypse, so as long as Diablo stayed far away from ETC there, they had taken, up an, taken out enough members of Team Liquid to get Game 2. And now things start to look scarier and scarier for Team Liquid. They had the Vikings comp. They play like on a whole different level when they have Vikings. But even still, Fnatic decisively says, nope, this game is ours. Yeah, decisive I think is the correct word to use there. There was only that one moment where Blumby got that money mosh 